This is Mobile Agent TV, helping agents stay on the cutting edge from coast to coast. Welcome to Mobile Agent TV. I am Michael Thorne of Remax Little Oak Realty in Langley, D.C. And my co-host, as always, is Dave Falkware from Bridgewater, New Jersey's Remax Preferred Professionals and the Enviro Realty team. Dave, we were fairly close in our NFL picks. I want you, because opening day was Saturday, I want you to pick not the World Series champion, but the two teams that will go head to head in this year's World Series. Well, I'd, the favorites are, are the Nationals in the uh, National League. However, uh, the Mets did just beat them two out of three. So um, I would certainly would like to see the Mets, like I said, with football, the Jets, but I, I don't know that that's going to happen. Um, and I think the um, Toronto Blue Jays from the American League. Well, I think the, the the Blue Jays don't have a bullpen. But okay, okay, uh, that's right. So Washington. So so are you gonna go? Are you gonna go Mets or are you gonna go with the Nationals? Nationals. I, okay. I hate to say it, but I think the Nationals are gonna. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So my so 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 my National League pick is the uh, is the Nationals. I think they're on paper the best team by a country mile. And yeah. out of the American League, I'll go with the Mariners as uh, as the champs. I'll see. Nationals and Mariners in the World Series. You're going Nationals, Toronto Blue Jays, which I wouldn't mind seeing. Um, Stacy, uh, oh, did Stacy just dropped off? I was just about to ask Stacy what her World uh, Series picks are going to be. But she Stacey's didn't like gone. the picks. She, she didn't like. She didn't like what we had to say. She's gone. Um, so uh, you can interact with us live uh, using the hashtag MATV Live. You can also get us on Twitter at Mobile Agent TV as well as the Q&A feature is enabled on the blog. So if you've got questions about Evernote for our guest, please put them in the Q&A section and uh, we'll get them asked as soon as our guest returns to the show. She probably had really, really important stuff to do. Um, really, really impressed with some of the moves that Twitter has made in the recent weeks and uh, just want to touch on people that are, that are Twitter users or casual Twitter users. You know, the, the, the big thing was always replying to tweets or, or putting a response that the previous tweet was 100 characters long and now you're trying to reply it and all you can say is yes or I agree. Now when you reply to a tweet, it almost becomes an attachment on the mobile device and so then you're given the 140 characters to respond to that tweet. So there's a lot more value. I know that Raj Kazar put out a link to a blog post that Kobe Bryant's having a hard time selling his home and, and, and he was saying, Kobe Bryant should call me and I'll be able to market his property. And so then I was able to respond to that tweet and give my two cents without only having five or six characters to do it. So that's a game changer. As well as, I don't know if it's released for everybody, but Twitter has rolled out their video portion of it. 30 seconds uh, formatted right inside Twitter. Plays, automatically plays. So when we're talking about scrolling through Twitter and being real noisy, once again, video has a lot of power and your ability to respond personally um, to someone's tweet or mention them in a video format has a ton of value. I know that I promote this show uh, for, uh, for, for Evernote using video directly on Twitter. So that is new. I think it's going to be a lot different. I think it's going to have stopping power in the Twitter stream, which is, which is great. Welcome back, Stacey. Um, as well as the other thing Twitter did is they've gone and purchased Periscope. There's been a lot of talk about Meerkat, but Periscope, and what Periscope allows you to do is broadcast live over Twitter and interact with people that are watching you there. So Chris Smith was talking about this on the water cooler the other day. I was impressed by it. The next morning I signed up, and at 6 o'clock in the morning, our time, he went live uh, for about 15 minutes talking about the value of having a really good business card, and it was very interactive with the audience. We could communicate with, with Chris and they could respond to us. I think something like virtual open house, uh, open houses would be a value. Like on a Tuesday evening, you could go to an open house, invite everyone in your community to take a tour of the home, and they could say, could we see the master bedroom again, or could we go down to the basement? You'd be able to interact with them, opposed to actually having a four-hour open house. I think interactive live broadcasting has some value there. That's called Periscope. It's an app. Uh, it's through Twitter, and uh, I think they're making some really smart moves, Twitter is right now. I um, want to introduce today's guest, Stacey Harmon, and as always, we read out our guest's 160 Twitter bio. You can get Stacey Harmon on Twitter, at Stacey Harmon, that's C-E-Y. Uh, it reads, Curious Person, Digital Workflow Design and Coaching, Evernote Business Certified Consultant and Ambassador, 
at get untethered author speaker GT, GTD getting things done I'm assuming and uh, crunchy taco lover welcome to the show Stacy thank you for having me I'm thrilled to be here now, now Dave suggested you dropped off Stacy because you didn't like our World Series picks are you a baseball fan do you have anything to say about this topic at all I have nothing to contribute here I apologize not my forte <laughs> that's, that's fine um, Stacy um, people know you as an Evernote ambassador, as an Evernote spokesperson, but you also have a, a really strong connection with the real estate industry. That's maybe why we know you more than maybe the other 45, 50 other ambassadors out there. Give us your history in the real estate space as well as your history with Evernote and what Harmon Enterprises does for people. Sure. Well, my entire professional career has been in the real estate space. I started in 1995 with a boutique brokerage in Newport Beach uh, in the marketing department and have really just stuck with real estate since then in a variety of roles uh, you know, on the brokerage and recruiting and retaining side, the operations side, as well as I sold for three years. So I have a real appreciation kind of for what the the real estate agent has to go through. I was always interested in technology and how the digital landscape was changing the business and just about the time I decided to sell real estate, social media was rising. So I really gravitated towards it as an opportunity to build my own business and um, I didn't love the sales side of the business. I much preferred the business side of real estate so I decided as soon as I saw the opportunities that digital, moving business towards digital provided, I decided I'm going to teach agents how to do this instead of be an agent doing it. So I started Harmon Enterprises. We did a lot of uh, social media and digital uh, consulting and um, many of your audience or some of your audience might know me from kind of the speaking circuit regarding that. One of the tools that I learned about on in playing in that space is Evernote. And I was kind of always an organized person. I thought that's kind of a good tool for me. And I have a typical story. I downloaded Evernote, didn't really know how to use it, thought, you know, it sounds kind of good, but not really sure how it can benefit me. And, you know, a year and a half later, I start to keep hearing about it and start uh, learning more and more some of the tips I'm going to show you today that really kind of fueled my passion for Evernote. And over time, I just uh, had to get around other people. It clicked for me. And I was able to make Evernote kind of the center point of my business and personal world. It shifted how I did everything. It brought my office with me for wherever I am. And I had to get around other people that were as enthusiastic and understood the power of Evernote. So I went to their conference. That led to me becoming an Evernote ambassador, which is uh, really just a champion for the, for the cause. They launched an Evernote business certified consultant program. I was part of their first class that uh, got that certification and I decided there were a few people that were having trouble understanding how they could deploy Evernote in their workflow so a fellow ambassador and I wrote a book kind of documenting our workflows because it's been so transformative for us and my business has just really shifted to working now with businesses of all sizes, a lot of real estate agents and teams as part of that um, but really even outside of that all the way you know, up to large corporations and the businesses outside of real estate that are using Evernote as their back-end uh, manager and, and their, their digital centerpiece. So I love Evernote. It's transformed my life. It's been very organic uh, through my own personal use and my love of teaching it uh, that my business has shifted that way. Yeah, absolutely. So here's, here's um, Stacy's book that she co-wrote, which is Untethered with Evernote. It's on my iPad because I, I do the show in Evernote, so it's right here. And uh, if you stick around to the end of the show, Stacey's going to give you guys all a very special offer on, on the book. I have read it. I encourage anyone to get it. It will change the learning curve and open your eyes at what the possibilities is. One of the things, um, Stacey, I spoke to you about before we went on the air was one of the things I like most about Evernote is – We've talked a lot on the show about CRMs, and people always ask David and myself and other people, what's the best CRM in real estate? Well, the answer is the best CRM that fits your style of business. So what, what the best CRM for me might not be the best CRM for Dave or somebody else. The advantage of Evernote, and it's very clear in the book that the two authors approach Evernote in very different ways because their personalities are different. Evernote will adapt to your the way that you handle your business and everyone will use Evernote slightly different because it sort of conforms to your body. That's the, one of the huge advantages of Evernote. Now, let's still speak about how it sort of adapts to the way you want it to work. 
Sure. Well, typically the CRMs that real estate agents are, are familiar with are really one word, structured. Okay, they're structured. Evernote, the brilliance of it is it's unstructured by design. Okay, so that allows us flexibility. The, and it allows us adaptability and an evolution as your business evolves, as your team grows, or you shift focuses, or you shift, you know, careers even. Um, Evernote can still be your tool that will ebb and flow with that. Um, the downside to that is for some people, they don't know how to create a structure in it. And Evernote really is powerful when you figure out how to, what are the core skills that support building a system, and what are the things that you need to track and what are the systems and processes you need to put in place in order to really support your workflow today. So you have to build that structure into Evernote and that's where a lot of my work and my teaching comes in. And, and I think that's absolutely one of the downfalls. I think when you open up Evernote and it's just a blank box with nothing in it, no, no, no stacks, no, no templates, no, no to-do lists, People just don't know where it goes, and that's one of the advantages of the book. And no, Andrew, it's not bookmarked in my Evernote book. It's in my it's in my iBooks account. But, I just would like I just would like to make sure that people understand though that that's also the power of it. The flexibility is the power in it. W without a doubt, and I think that's why talking about things like this on this show, where people can get examples of how they can use it in their business, will get them over the blank screen. Because I know. I, I don't know how many people I've met that have actually implemented Evernote that don't continue to use it because it becomes such a fundamental part of your brain. It, 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 um, Dave said a lot of times about, I think, drip campaigns and CRMs, Dave, that idea that if you know it's done and you know where it is, you don't have to think about it and then you can move on and focus on what's important. I think, Dave, that organization in whatever form that takes is crucial, especially as our business starts to ramp up because it's in missing the details where in this business that's where things that's where the issues start to come up well yeah you have to know where that where all those little details are and they can't be in your head all right I mean that's that's sort of the downfall of people that's why they burn out because they keep everything in their head they wake up in the middle of the night and go oh my god I forgot to and if it's in some kind of a system you know we talked about systems then it's out of your head you can go have a life and come back to your business and your systems and it just it all keeps clicking in. Yeah. So, so we've got a lot of viewers continuing to join the show here. Uh, you can interact with us live on Twitter at Mobile Agent TV or using the hashtag MATV, or you can click on the Q and A feature right on the blog. You can ask your questions. You can vote them up, vote them down. So, as we go through the top ten pro tips from Stacy for realtors on Evernote, if you have any questions, ask them, and we'll get them asked here on the show. So, you, Stacy, you've broken this down into sort of three sections. The first, the, the first three tips are about building that Evernote foundation, about sort of structure or, or how do you organize it. So your tip one is to have the right tools in the right setup on Evernote and its uh, companion app. So let's talk about that as your first go-to tip. Sure. And I think that every Evernote user can benefit from dialogues like this. And the issue is there are dialogues and tips from oodles and oodles of power users and people. What they all need to have in common in order to actually implement those things is the right setup and configuration. Everything's got to be working in order to have you go to your computer, go to the menu, and have that appear, right? So for the most part, that tends to, um, that tends to happen, but some of these power tips and workflows that we're going to discuss really need to have certain settings enabled. They need to have this companion apps, which Evernote's not just Evernote. It's a whole suite of applications as well as third-party apps that really make the functionality sing. And you have to spend, and I advocate, one hour, one quality hour, <laughs> getting the foundation set up so that you can actually deploy the types of things that we're going to talk about. And I can, I actually found that I went through that one hour of work with every single consulting client that I work with and so I went ahead and recorded what I do and it's available for free on my website. I have the link. I gave it to you. You can add it to the video afterwards or something. Yep. But you can sit there and watch that one hour that combs through the settings and the applications, the companion apps that you need to download so that you're prepared to execute on what you're going to hear today. And it's so critical because it's things like, I mean, in the book, we call it like building your toolkit, 
right? You have to have the found in real estate terms the foundation, the architectural plans to really build the right house. And um, you know, you want to make sure you've got Evernote, the app, downloaded on every possible device. You want to know, remember that you know your password. I mean, I really can't help you if you don't know your Evernote password. I can't tell you how many times it takes me a half hour just to, to locate that so that we can install all these things. Right? <laughs> you probably, I see you identify with that. You know, is the Web Clipper installed? Is it configured? You know, is Sketch that allows you to annotate images downloaded as a separate uh, app on all your devices? Is Scannable, which we'll talk more about if you're on iOS, uh, installed. You know, these are just these are the foundations that make Evernote such a, an amazing platform. You got to go through it. They all have settings. I want you to take a couple minutes and look through those settings and talk about a couple specifics today. But that alone will skyrocket your Evernote usage uh, just by um, by spending that one hour to get ready. Dave just sent me a a message on Evernote. Thanks, Dave. <gasps> got it. That's awesome. Baby. He gave me the. So, and by the way, Andrew, I love I, I love our audience that keeps you know the best thing about our audience is they don't get, let me get away with anything. I said hashtag MATV apparently, and I should have said hashtag MATV live because MATV is like a band in Holland or something like that. So don't <laughs> use that hashtag hashtag MATV live. Um, Dave, you're on Evernote. So 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 talk. Okay, so that's what you want to have, and we don't want to go into what Web Clipper is. I mean, this is all the research we've got an hour, and we want to bring you ten tips. But this is all about having these things utilized, so that then you can then you can execute on tips two through ten, uh, right. and that's really the really th the, the the basis of it. Um, Anything else on, on setting things up at all? Any you know, just watch that? that video. It's a free hour of consulting, <laughs> and it'll get you set up, and then you can actually be, have the right foundation to move forward. You're going to find all the links that Stacy shared with me through an Evernote uh, uh, file uh, in the description, depending if you're on YouTube or if you're on <laughs> Facebook or on our blog. It, you'll find the links everywhere, so it's all there. Tip number two is one of those things that I regret not doing sooner because it was one of those, and I think Evernote's very, very smart, and I think we're seeing this more and more, this freemium type of an attitude, this we're going to prove to you that we have value, and then once we demonstrate it as value, you will then sign up and be a paid user. That's where we are. I wish I had done it so much sooner. Um, so tip number two is to upgrade to premium. It's not expensive when we're talking about running a business, but talk about the vast majority of people are using the freemium version of, of Evernote and the huge advantages that come along with being a professional or pro or an upgraded to a premium user. So the free version, Evernote has three versions, and most users start on the, the, the free Evernote app. It's a very robust application. You can do a lot of great stuff. You can get hooked on Evernote, and you can transform your business with it. But by upgrading, we're talking pro tips here, and I, you need to have the premium version, which is $5 a month or $45 a year. You need to invest that much in your business to really see the full opportunities that Evernote provides and execute on some of these uh, really, really impressive tips uh, that Evernote will allow you to do. Um, when you upgrade to premium, you get, a, number one, you get a bigger upload limit. They don't cap how much you can store in Evernote. They cap how much you can upload on a monthly basis. And we're in real estate. You guys are dealing with contracts, audio notes, large image files, things that take up bandwidth. And you want to be able to put that in Evernote, which centralizes it for you, which makes the your information in your office available to you from wherever you are <laughs> and you're going to run up across that limit pretty quick um, if you don't upgrade to premium so you go from 60 megabyte up limit to 4 gigabytes just by going to uh, premium uh, and, and, and it, it's tough it's tough to even put a dent in 4, four gigabytes it's like it's really it, tough and it resets every month it resets <laughs> every single month so you've got that you also can have larger notes so again you're dealing in when we start to talk about putting documents into Evernote which is something you may choose to do. You want to have a larger note size. You can get up to 100 megabytes versus a 25 megabyte note. So that's useful as well. Uh, you also can have offline notebooks on your mobile devices. So um, if you don't have internet access, you still have data access through all of your, um, through your mobile devices. 
you can search. This is a biggie. We're going to talk about, um, you know, should you put documents into Evernote? If you do put documents into Evernote, like Word documents or Keynotes or Pages documents, depending what you use, uh, PDFs. Evernote will actually index and do a search and retrieve all of that information from the content that's in those attached documents uh, in the premium version, which is a huge, huge asset. So if you have like, say you're doing, uh, you're you're working with an investor and you do like an ROI analysis or something in an Excel spreadsheet, uh, you can add that to Evernote and then if you ever do a find for a term that appears in that Excel spreadsheet or say that client's name, it, that note will come up. Really, really helpful. Makes you smarter and brings all your data together when you need it. Um, so really good premium feature. Casey, uh, is, that, is, is it only in the premium where like like snapshots of handwritten notes or... So that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, there, It's called OCR scanning and they do offer that in all versions of Evernote for pictures. So it will read your handwriting and it will index and find anything that's in an image. Um, in even the free version. So again, it's really robust at the free version, but it's this do extra document scanning that comes with the premium. So one of the huge advantages of that, and I, and I was at a, at, at a conference here in Vancouver yesterday, and um, someone said, we're talking about Evernote, we were sitting around the table before the event started, and we're talking, because it was like, it was an event called Keep It On The Download, it's about downloading apps that are going to improve your business, and everyone there was like, Evernote's the best for, for real estate. She goes, yeah, but I still like to write, she still had a book, she likes to write notes. Well, you can sit at a coffee shop, write the notes, and have that experience, take a snapshot of it, and then it's an Evernote and searchable. You could never search your handwritten notes opposed to flipping through and hoping you see that word that you're looking for. So just taking your notes and getting them online will make your That's life functional. by accident. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great asset. So there's a bunch of other features too. Um, business card scanning, which we're going to talk about as a tip, that is a premium feature. And if you are in sales everybody in the audience, right? If you're in sales, this will transform your lead generation and your opportunities. We're going to talk specifically about that as we go forward. There's also some things, Evernote's really on the bleeding edge of what's called um, like contextual search. They're really, they're in this mission to kind of make you smarter and they dish up information to you uh, and try in anticipation of what they think you're looking for when you go through search. And there's a couple things that are premium features that are hard to explain kind of in this, this format, but related notes um, and something called context on the Mac, which will be coming uh, to hopefully all the platforms soon. But these, are, this is Evernote's way of actually, if you do a find for a note um, that is uh, about uh, a client, and you have um, other notes in there about that client, it'll say, okay, we think you're looking for this note, but by the way, you might be looking for one of these three, these three notes too. And uh, when you get into collaboration, this is really, really powerful. So if your assistant has talked to the, to the lead and you do a search for your note, you might actually uncover the assistant's note as well. So those are all premium features and it's really cool. <laughs> That's a great feature. I, I like sitting at the end of my notes and then at the very end saying, here's, here's what else is on this topic because you you may let's say you use Evernote to 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 catalog blog post ideas, right? You have an Evernote when you see an article, you snap it in there. Well, there might be related blog posts, and then that could expand on what you're saying. I think it's a it's a it's a huge advantage. It's a huge advantage. Uh, Dave, do you have the notes in front of you? I do. You want to set up to, uh, tip number three? Do I? Oh, oh, the no, oh, the notes you sent me. No, I went back out of it. No, I'm oh, sorry. you went back out of it. Okay. No, I went back out. I was, I was talking. I'm sitting here going like, but I think I can do that. And I'm over here and I'm, just, I'm playing with it as we're doing it. It's already <laughs> implementing. We're changing behavior already. It's I'm getting awesome. ideas and I got questions because I think I know where it's going and I think I already answered my questions. But let's go through the things and then I'll fire more. Got it. Uh, tip number three is audit then connect your LinkedIn account to your Evernote account. I love this and. Talk about that and why we should be doing that. Okay, so based on tip number two, I'm going to assume you're a premium user for the rest of these tips, okay? Hopefully you are converted, and this is one of the reasons why. Evernote has an integration with LinkedIn that for sales professionals is very, very important. So you want to link, you want to go through your LinkedIn profile, make sure it represents you as a realtor and all of those kinds of things, says what you want it to say. Then you want to go into Evernote, either on your mobile device or on the web app, and you want to create a connection between your Evernote account and your LinkedIn account. So 
you on the um, web you just need to go to your connected services tab in your profile um, and then on your mobile you kind of this here's the path you go through settings camera business cards okay cameras settings business cards and you want to be sure you're logged in to your Evernote account and to your LinkedIn account and that they're joined okay Evernote will prompt you for this once you have that Here's again, it's going to make you smarter and it's going to help you network. And you guys are in sales and it's going to show several things. Number one, it's going to make it, uh, it's going to make context, this premium feature that we uh, just discussed, a little smarter. So if you get a lead or you email in a note from uh, a person and there's a match between their email account and their LinkedIn account, you're going to see their LinkedIn profile at the bottom of that note. So talk about getting more information about people that you're interacting with. That's just one use case, okay? So this context. But the reality is you guys are in sales and the opportunity to increase your LinkedIn connections is important. You know, it's one more touch point with all of these customers. And then it also really, 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 really skyrockets the possibilities and the effectiveness of the um, business card uh, feature, which is my tip number four. So I'm mean, going to use that as the transition, which yeah. kind of moves us into, um, that's the setup stuff. You're going to set up your LinkedIn, you're going to get your foundation set up, and you're going to upgrade to premium. And now you're ready to go to really, um, really maximize what it has to offer. So tip four is going to be to use Evernote's business card uh, camera feature. So, Michael, I used this with you in um, in in Vegas when yeah. we met at R4. Phil uh, and I sat down with you for 20 minutes. <laughs> That's right. So we um, Evernote has this has a camera, and on your mobile device, um, you're going to want to take a photo. Now, for the iOS version, they just this week updated it, so you don't even have to swipe left or right yet. I don't know if Michael, you were familiar with um, yeah. that upgrade. Um, but for iOS, you just simply take, you open up the app on your phone, you open the camera in Evernote, and you hold the photo, your phone, over the card. It will automatically snap the picture and then pull out all the data fields and make it into a context-rich structured note that has some options for you. The first option is you can actually email your information directly to the other person with the click of a button on the iOS app. You can also send them a LinkedIn request assuming that your LinkedIn stuff is connected to your Evernote account, which is tip number three, <laughs> okay? So you can be building your LinkedIn connection simply by taking a business card picture uh, at Starbucks, at a conference, at an open house, at a broker preview, uh, all of these places where we come into contact with people that are, or kind of into contact with people that are useful to us. So really, really powerful stuff. Um, I don't know, do you have anything to add uh, on that part of it? No, I, I just think it's such a huge value. We're talking about we're talking about simplicity. And we're talking about systems. We're talking about impressing people too, as well. You know, we I sat down with you, Stacy, in Vegas. You said, "Can I see your business card?" Not, "Can I have your business card?" Can I see your business card? And between the waitress bringing over a drink, we were connected on LinkedIn. You know what I mean? Like, and and and, and so then that context is there, and the 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 value of that is now that we're connected on LinkedIn. I can read testimonials from past clients. I can get links to your websites. All these things that an actual physical business card could never ever do for you. And whether we're networking at a meetup group with potential people in our own marketplace or we're at an event like R4, the ability to then start to build that relationship, which then becomes into geotagging, we'll get into that later on because that's that even takes those business cards to another level. That ability to impress someone that says, I know what I'm doing and I'm staying ahead of things, even if it's a client of yours or a potential client of yours, and they've interacted with other agents again who have only just taken their business card and walked away from the meeting, it just those sort of flavors of, of, of impressing people. Dave, you said you know, you've used Evermote in note-taking when you're doing a walkthrough of a home. I do it. I take audio notes when people are walking through the home. 
Why? Because it's good for my business to have those notes. But it's also in an impressive statement saying, uh -huh. I do things differently and I do it better than the competition. That's what the advantage is as well as the actual data date. Well, I mean, and I've closed business. Granted, I'm not in real estate sales anymore, but I've closed business because people have that wow factor. They're like, I just got an email from you asking you to connect on LinkedIn and we're still sitting there in the bar, right? Or wherever we are. Not all my business development is done at the bar, by the way. Let me just no, no, clarify no. that. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's 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 where Dave and I do our business, but not okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, so the um, but not only the LinkedIn, but if you're on iOS, you can actually I have Michael's contact information shared in, or added to my contacts automatically which is then syncing to the cloud and so it's available on my computer. So list building right off the bat, really, really functional. So I have a challenge to the audience. If I, want, if, if I want to send you an email, Stacy, I can go into my, my, my email account and just type in Stacy Harmon. I don't have to search for your email address. If I, I don't have to look for it because it's in my contacts. Same thing, if I want to fire you off a of bomb bomb, Stacy, I just go to bomb bomb and you're in my contact list. So there's a huge, huge uh, <laughs> availability. Um, good question uh, just came in. Uh, and, and I hate to say this because Scannables iOS only, Instagram just put out a new, a new app that's awesome and it's iOS only. Uh, the future of a Scannable for Android. Where, where Do you have any idea, Stacey, how far that's away? I mean, I don't care. I'm an iOS guy, but a lot of Android people out there. No I don't know. Um, the reality is in terms, I don't know the answer to that. They don't yeah. tell me that type of a thing. But I can tell you that you can still benefit on Android from, by using the camera within the Evernote app and get this kind of uh, business card functionality. Uh, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that iOS has, but certainly, you know, Evernote builds to the opportunities available on the platform. So that tends to favor the Mac on occasion. Sometimes, you know, the PC has some opportunities that we don't have on the Mac, but that's that's kind of how their development structure goes. And I, I don't know. I know a lot of people would like it, but you can still benefit if you have Android. And the LinkedIn features work on the Android as well. Yeah. So my, um, I actually have a challenge to the audience that'll take us kind of into to the next tip as well. Um, you know, I challenge real estate agents to not bring a business card home from a conference. Uh, I think there's lots of you out there. I mean, you guys make money through referrals, okay? And when you go to a conference, you're meeting people from all over the country that you'd be happy to send a referral to if you ever had one. And if you use this business card feature, you will actually have created a contact database without ever having left the location to um, a whole network of people that can really help you. And I can't, if I tell you guys, if I polled the audience and said, how many of you have a stack of business cards from R4 sitting on your, your desk, you know, Michael should not raise his hand. <laughs> I know, I know I shouldn't. I, I, I bring them home, I bring them home and they're all unscannable. But see, this okay. next, if, if there's a list on this top 10 people, because Dave's a great networker, Dave's going to be impressed with number five because this is one of those things that will really, really impress you because it has so much value for people that do attend conferences and that are networking. And, and, and so you, we need to scan those in. But go ahead. Okay. So that leads to the next tip, which is uh, Evernote, again, on its mission to make you smarter in ways you didn't know you need, it, you want to enable location-based tracking uh, services uh, that for Evernote on all devices that you use Evernote on, particularly your mobile device, even your laptop, you want to enable this feature. So they'll prompt you. You know how they always say, you know, do you want to allow Evernote to use your location? Yes, absolutely yes, okay? What this is doing is when you create new notes, no matter how you create them, whether it's by taking a picture of a business card, whether it's by typing in an idea, it is adding location data to the meta information of that note. And Evernote has an Atlas feature uh, in their um, app that actually will map the location of notes that you created. So what I can do is I can say, you know what, I can't remember his name, but we met at R4 in, um, in the, the bar Border Grill. So I can actually go to the Vegas map and zoom in to the MGM Grand area and see the notes that I generated at that location and pull up Michael's card there. So I can remember 
you know, the full context of what it is that I, I, where I met him and what his name was and have that link over to, you know, other pieces of information. So this map-based atlas feature is awesome. So think about this. Uh, and by the way, that can be overridden. This is a true power tip, Michael. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the info button, the little I in the upper right-hand corner of all your notes, shows that geolocation information and you can override that so you could actually override the location that you met them with the location they serve and have a full map of the United States with agents that work in all those areas and pull that up so next time you get a referral you could say you know what in Austin Texas I know Stacy deals in that area and I'm gonna just pull through link through to her card and you've got you go I mean I think there's a huge opportunity there I think that's an enormous opportunity. I think the opportunity is saying, hey, do you know someone? Because Dave and I get asked this quite a bit because at the end of the show, we make this offer to anyone. If you know someone coming out our way who needs an agent, we'll put you in the right hands of the agent. You know, for us to be able to say, who's working in North Vancouver or who's that? And, and to have those business cards there or wherever they are is a huge advantage. The other advantage I see for location-based is client stuff. Because if I'm at a client's house and I open up a new note, the title of the note is default the address of their home because it knows where I'm taking that note. So when you're in a neighborhood and you've got five minutes to spare or ten minutes to spare, you can pop up your notes and go, oh, that's right. Tom and Judy live around the corner. I'm going to pop in for five minutes and see how they're doing. You don't have a lot of advantages of having your notes there that will let you know your phone knows where you are and they know where your context of your notes are. That is an opportunity on so many levels for what we do. Even if they're like local businesses, whatever it is, all that stuff can be there when people are asking for advice about, you know, where's the closest paint shop or what, whatever it is. There's so much value there because those notes don't get into Evernote unless there's context with you. These are people you have met, these people you've worked with. Like, there's a lot, a lot of value on the location-based services. Yeah, and I love talking to you about this because I agree. There's such a brainstorming opportunity here. I mean, think about broker preview even and the age or showings and agents leave like all their cards on the counter. You could scan all those cards right there and then see per property how many agents have you know have a quick link to get to all of the agents that have come through there. Open houses if you're savvy enough to actually capture a business card or you know make a list of contacts. Uh, that's going to capture that geolocation information right away. Allow you to retrieve it. Help you better service your listings and and your lead generation efforts. So love it. Love it. And by the way, Phil did right into the Q and A. He's taking your uh, business card challenge. No oh. more cards. He's throwing them away. Good job, Phil. Let me know how that goes. And it's pretty impressive to be able to hand it back to him too and say thanks. I don't need it anymore. Check your email. You've got my contact info. And that's what I mean. It's talking about impressing people like that. That's that's a wow. I mean, we we forget because sometimes we get used to this. But simple things like that, when you're talking about, hey, I'm going to handle your $500,000 home, I know what I'm doing, you know, they've interacted with agents before, and if you can interact in a, in a 2015 manner, they want you to interact with a 2015 manner, even if, they, they're like, even if, if they're not 2015 people, they want their agent to be 2015 people. That's what they're paying you to do, and, and so there's a, there's a whole lot of value there. Um, Instant note creation on your phone. This has been a, 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 a big thing for me because before it was, for me, it was difficult, but, but, but go ahead and talk about the advantage to have. Yeah, so those of you that are Evernote users probably get it, and I want what I want to do is make it as quick as possible for you to get information into Evernote from your mobile device. Okay, so what you need to do is on the Android, you guys are familiar with widgets and adding those to your home screen and Evernote's got some great widgets so you want to go ahead and do that and it'll enable you to with one touch be able to create notes really, really quickly. Well the great news is they just launched this for the um, for that uh, iPhone as well and it's kind of like this hidden secret in iOS 8 that you need to enable and uh, there's a link that I provided Michael that'll tell you exactly it's a tutorial on exactly how to do it but what you can do is add it to your notification screen so that even from your lock screen you can create a note um, with one touch and you can create a variety of different types of notes so it's really really powerful and um, uh, now you have that option on both iOS and Android and it'll shorten it'll take those seconds away from needing to create uh, you know take how much time it takes to create a note and makes it easier to centralize again all your information in Evernote. And once again all the links from the show I'm going to write up a, a robust uh, uh, 
synopsis, and all the links will be down below, up above, wherever they go. Sometimes I see down that Facebook puts them up, and then they're all over the place. You'll find the link somewhere. <laughs> around the with... video, somewhere around the video. <laughs> um, so, talk, I mean, I I haven't I haven't touched paper in eight years, and I shouldn't say that. I, I, we've been papers for eight years. I haven't touched paper in three, and. And a lot of that has to do with at the beginning of being paperless. It was it was a struggle. Like there, like it was an effort to be paperless. Now, uh, in tip number seven, I, I totally agree with you. When I when I do happen to come across a piece of paper, it, it, I, I get weird about it, and then I know that I can in seconds be paperless again. And and, and that's when when actually when we get asked in forms now, what's the best scanner? I in my head don't think they're referring to the one you're going to buy at a in a box at at Best Buy. I assume they mean which scanner application. I that's how I think of scanning now. So um, talk about tip number seven, which is just consider your phone a scanner. Yeah. So um, you the reality is the goal is not necessarily paperless, but it is fileless, right? And um, the phone now has so much opportunity to digitize any kind of paper you come in touch with. Michael, you talked about it earlier, handwritten notes, right? Or you jot down something on a napkin at a client meeting, right? Or the back of a business card. I mean, paper can be part of our business. And honestly, in real estate, even with you know a percentage of the agents, you got a lot of paper that you're dealing with, right? Um, you want to consider your phone a tool for digitizing that. And the there's two ways to do this. One that works on all platforms, and that's through the camera, the document scanner in Evernote. Okay, so that works for everybody. And again, that shortcut in tip um, six about instant note creation can take you right to the camera feature in Evernote. The second, though, for those of you that are on iOS, is you have to download the companion app Scannable. It was recently it was released in October of last year into beta, and now it's in public release. And it has absolutely transformed my interaction with paper. It makes paperless totally possible. Totally yep. possible. When when and I know that Andrew's watching right now, and a couple of the people that are watching right now. When when, when there, I forget what form it was. What's the best app? It, there's no there. I used to say there's no difference between Turbo Scan or Genius Scan or Jot. Not they were all the same. That's not the case when it comes to Scannable. It's hands down the best, especially if you're an Evernote user. Hands down be, best way to it, it's it's phenomenal. And even if you're not an Evernote user, you need to download Scannable if you have iOS, and here's why. What Scannable does is it allows you to instantly digitize any paper of any size. Okay, So it doesn't matter if it's a contract, it doesn't matter if it's a receipt. Okay, That's number one. It puts it into what Evernote calls a transactional form. Okay, So it's going to digitize it and give you a preview of your digitization here. And if you do, it'll do multiple sheets. So if you have a multiple page document, you just hold it here and pull the stuff under it and it'll take the different pictures and create one PDF document of that. Now, here's the question. What do you want to do with that? Okay, one thing might be you want to send it to Evernote, right? So for us Evernote users, that's helpful. You can designate which notebook you want to send it to or pick a different notebook each time. But for non-Evernote users, you can email it to your client, you can text it to someone, you can save that to your camera roll, you can do something with it that's actually functional beyond saving it in Evernote. And then beyond that, if you do, and I advocate for agent teams in particular, get a desktop scanner, um, the Evernote ScanSnap Edition scanner, which is a $500 piece of equipment, but it's so fast, and it transforms the need to, um, you know, to have paper in your office. It allows you to take and th your phone and through Bluetooth, I can put that 20-page contract through the Evernote ScanSnap and have all 20 pages appear on any phone with Bluetooth enabled and that has a scannable app there. So anyone from your team can use it and then have that same functionality. They can save it to their Evernote account. They can text it. They can email it. They can uh, do a variety of things with it. So really, really cool stuff. Stacy, question from Don, and I think I think I know the answer, but you're the expert. Uh, does the business card scanner work with Windows Phone app? Yes, in premium, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it is. That's, it works on the Android now. User. 
Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So any that's my any. Just think of your phone as a scanner. Uh, I I hope they bring Scannable to Android soon because it. It certainly is a game changer. Uh, I can tell you even, <laughs> I have a post online, I'll, I'll share it with you. I have a white desk, I have a white desk, and you need a contrasting background. And um, I kind of have this acrylic uh, cover. I put parchment paper and butcher paper like underneath one corner of it so that I have a contrasting background so I can do any color thing. I mean, it's just like, I, it's my scanner. I don't need a scanner at home anymore because my phone is my scanner. I've done it before. I have I have a deposit check or something I want, and I'm I'm walking around for a dark piece of you know flat surface that I can use to uh, to scan it. Um, so that's uh, that was tip number seven. Now tips eight through ten. That was sort of we went through mobile stuff, and the huge advantage of of Evernote for real estate agents is if we're at our desk all day, we're not being productive. That's how I see it. You know, we still got to put them in a car. Dave, my wife's going to hate this episode because you haven't said a thing and I feel so It's bad. okay. You know what I'm doing here the whole time? I'm loading stuff on my iPad. I already put Scannable on here. I mean, I'm just <laughs> absorbing all of this stuff because it's like before this episode, I'm going like, ever know, what's everybody all excited over here? I just got a big green screen on my iPad over here. I, I put some notes on it, and you wouldn't believe what I did. I would take the notes. I take the notes like this, and I take a picture of the notes on my iPad, all right, and I put the picture in the Dropbox in the file. That's stupid of mine. <laughs> but you know what, Dave? I know. I know now. I know now that those notes can go. I don't even know how yet, but those notes can go right into Dropbox, right? Am I right? Well, they just go into Evernote, too. You don't have to leave them. I mean, Evernote's everywhere. Well, I know. Well, I mean, some. How we have Dropbox, we have everything in there. I mean, I, 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 no way I can get away from that. I'm like, no, 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 I, I understand that, but I think for a lot of people, Dave, a lot of the agents, perhaps watching maybe on the replay or whatnot, they're like you. They hear it's so great, but they just don't have the context. How is it great? And that's why the advantage of having someone like Stacey. I mean, Andrew came out. Yeah, we had a great episode with Andrew. I mean, we right talked now, about how we're right going. Now we got a book coming at the end. We got tips. We got links. It's like, well, you got to do is sit down and start, you know, implementing it. But what I wanted to say yeah. about the mobile device is, is the advantage is that we're on the road. We're out moving, and so being able to have your office with you or have stuff get, get put into here so that you have it back at your office is a value. I'm sure there's a lot of Evernote users that sit at their desk all day and there's value, but for us that are always out in our car from coffee shop, from different appointments, oh, I had that from five years ago, and now i got to put my fingers on it. I've said it many, no. many, many times on the show. We actually have we actually have pretty good systems that are all paperless. We have Dropbox. We're using PDF Expert on time. We have Dot Loop in the office, and so we're, we we got all these things working, and we're fileless, all right. Um, but we're, I'm always looking for ways to make it to take the time frame that we implement these things and put it down like this, so we're more efficient because it takes a little time to kind of keep this all rolling between the team members. And this yeah. seems to me, at least at this point, that this is something I can compress the work. You know, if once we learn, we go through the learning curve. I got some young guys on our team, so they can, they'll, they'll show me. But, but, but here's another thing, too, is I think the huge power in Evernote is not the filing. It's in the retrieving. That's the huge value of Evernote. I mean, I'm you wearing this to T-shirt. You to find. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I know I have a note. I know I've got a contract. It was from five years ago. Where is it? I mean, we've all gone through our Dropbox account. Is it in this folder? No. Is it in this folder? No. Is it in this folder? That Those days are gone when you use Evernote. You know his name was Doug, and you met at a Denny's. That's all you need to know, and you've got the information you, you have. So it's cool. not in the filing. It's in the retrieving that there's value. Yep. So now we're back at the office. Uh, pro tips 8 through 10, um, uh, Stacy are, are back at the office. Number 8 is uh, the advanced syntax search. Yeah, so to your point, we want to be able to find things. We don't want to search. We want to find, right? So there, once you get a lot of notes in your account, you need to start becoming a little savvier with the search syntax and some of the advanced options that Evernote provides. I've got 13,000 notes in there in my Evernote account. I would not store that many notes in there if I wasn't confident that I could retrieve what I need to retrieve when I need to retrieve it. And uh, there's a couple of tips that I want to, um, There's, t I have a link that I provided you guys that he'll post that gives you the full syntax um, opportunities that Evernote provides. I'm going to leave you with two that I use all the time. And they do work on your mobile device, they're just a little easier on the desktop app. Um, the first is if you 
precede your search with the phrase in title, I-N-T-I-T-L-E colon, no spaces, I-N-T-I-T-L-E colon, and then put the word you're looking for. That will restrict the search to find that word or phrase only in the title of your Evernote notes, not the full body. So if you follow, again, this is a little more of an advanced thing, but if you have a naming convention to your notes and you kind of have a system for how you're doing things and you are specific and purposeful in what you put in the title of your note, which is a, a, a strategy I advocate. We don't have time to get into it here, but it's certainly a good practice. All in the book. Um, what's that? It's in the book. Yes, it's in the book. <laughs> That's right. Um, you can do a find and restrict it so that it's only showing up in the body. Because earlier we talked about how Evernote will index everything, including you know all the documents and everything that's in there. That can get overwhelming when you have 13,000 notes. So one of the tools I use is the in-title search. Excellent, excellent search tip. The other is it will do an and search, not an or search, if you put your phrase in quotes. So. If I did an in-title search for Stacy Harmon and I put a space and no quotes, it's going to find any notes that had Stacy in the title and uh, or Harmon in the title. If I put quotes around Stacy Harmon, it will find only notes that have that exact phrase in the title, and that's a really helpful tip um, when you're when you're searching for things in Evernote. So what, those are just two that I use I use all the time, and it really is one of those shortcuts that makes me more powerful and allows me to dump an immense amount of data into Evernote. Do you have any you use? What was that? What do you use? Anything else, or do you use those? No, I use that. I use that. I mean, th I think one of the things is, you know, some people are going to be tagged people, right? And, and I think that's what's really good about the book is, 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 there, is there some people that just want to put it in and find it later and some people that want to organize it before so that they can find it later. And that's the real value. First of all, the book lets you know what, what, what both ideas are. But once again, it conforms to the way you want to search for it. So if at the beginning of your Evernote users, you always put the, the, the client's last name at the end of the title, uh, you know, listing details, dash, the, the client's name, or maybe even the address, or, or the street, or whatever it is, then you know down the road that that's how you're going to search for things. So it's really going to conform to the way you want to find it later based on how you run your brain. So that's, it's, it's beautiful that way. It sort of, sort of um, you know, it fits you. Um, now, uh, this is, this is, there's a lot of these, and we'll cut and paste all these into the, into the notes, uh, but talking about um, keyboard shortcuts that now over time since reading the book they become native to me like I don't even know how to do it the old way anymore but 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 they've just become part of part of your life so talk about the advantage of uh, keyboard shortcuts and saving time yeah so the ninth tip is that you you really can shave time off of your Evernote usage that's shave. Sorry. Yeah, you can shave. You can just like shave these seconds off of your experience with Evernote when you learn shortcuts that really support how you work in the system. Again, thirteen thousand notes. <laughs> um, it's tough to like manage all that data, uh, or it could be tough to manage all that data. But I use shortcuts to move notes around and um, create new notes, all without taking my fingers off the keyboard. And it's definitely a pro user tip. There's again different shortcuts for the PC and for the Mac, and I've provided links for both, so you guys can uh, refer to that afterwards. I just want to tell you a couple that I find really, really useful that work on um, both platforms. The first is creating a new note, Command M or control N for note uh, will execute a new note uh, from the keyboard. So if you're on the phone with your headset, you get an up desk call and you want to just create a new note for that, you know, go ahead and, and use your keyboard. Um, the second, this one's really helpful. You know, you can insert, a, we all know that Evernote's got this checklist feature where if you hit return, it, it adds a checkbox. You can insert a to-do item with a keyboard command. Did you know that one, Michael? No, I didn't. Yeah, I, so I did because I, I wrote the notes last night, but I didn't before. Yeah, I use it all the time. So I will actually use on the Mac it's Control Command T for a to do. On the PC it's Control Shift C probably for checklist, and that will insert a checkbox. You can just start typing and then hit return. It, it activates that that checklist feature. 
really, really functional. So um, those are two that I really like. And then if you're on the Mac, um, this one's super important to me. The PC doesn't offer it. I don't know if it's a, it must be an issue with the platform. Um, but you can move notes around without ever taking your fingers off the keyboard. And Control Command M is uh, a huge asset to me. Um, there's multiple ways to move notes around in Evernote. We could do 20 minutes just on that. Um, but I save an immense amount of time by uh, moving the note with um, the Control Command M. Speak, speaking of moving the note, because one of the one of the like thank yous from bumping into you in in Vegas was the fact that I have all my templates for a new buyer or a new seller. Here's, here's the five notes that I want to cut and paste into, into the new file. And what I was doing, because you, couldn't, you can't duplicate a notebook, I was like physically going in and select all the wording and making a new one, and then you, and you gave me the solution to take those notes, duplicate it, and move them somewhere else. So go ahead and share with that with, a, with our audience yeah. uh, how simple that is. You, there's, a, there's a note command in Evernote through the note menu called... Um, uh, copy note and it's like copy note dot 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 and then you can just duplicate that note it creates a copy of that note into any notebook that you want yeah. so um, if Four this is really opposed to 400 clicks thank you for saving me that time that <laughs> yeah so you don't have to copy and paste all the contents of the note into a new note you can just duplicate that note really helpful in template based strategies which again we could probably do a whole other session on we do discuss some of them in the book as well um, I, I know we're going to get it to, to, to it at the end, uh, but I definitely, um, Katie just asked, what's the link to, to your book? Uh, it is at uh, www.getuntethered.com, but there is going to be a special offer at the end of the show, so stick around for that. We've got, I think we're at one more. Tip number 10. And tip number 10, and this is the one, this is the one that I know will really change, especially when we're talking about Dropbox. You know, there's links there. There's other things. This this is really some of the value, and that is links, 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 and more links. And this is – I'm not saying don't buy the book in print form. I'm saying the advantage, once again, of having something digital is that it can become interactive. And, 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 here's, and here's the value here, too, as well as links, 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 and more links. Okay. So links are really one of those things that absolutely transformed my usage of Evernote. And I have to credit, um, you know, there's lots of people that teach you about it, but I read uh, Dean Ouellette's book, uh, Evernote for Real Estate, and it, like, clicked how he showed some use cases for that. And links, I advocate wholeheartedly. Now, there's a lot of ways to use links in Evernote, and I'm going to go through three different types of links because I think people don't understand that there's these nuances to them, okay? The first way is actually outbound links, pasting them in Evernote. So, Dave, this is your use case. Dropbox. You know how you can grab a shared link from Dropbox that mm -hmm. takes right to that note? All right, same with Drive and all of those services. I would suggest you leave your document there on Dropbox in your existing system, copy that shared link, and put it in a note in Evernote around other things that are contextually related to that document. Hmm. So you've got a quick pass. So if anyone's leaving that note, here's where you're going to find the rest of the information. Click, send it right there. You don't have to log into Dropbox. You don't have to find it. It takes you straight there within the note. It takes you straight to the note, and that works on your mobile device. It works on your desktop. It allows you to have a conversation around a contract or a document or a high-res image, anything. Um, but use, leave your data where it is and just start linking to it in Evernote. It's really powerful, <laughs> okay? Um, so that's kind of a light bulb moment for a lot of clients I work with. It's like, okay, we don't really have to change where you're storing your stuff. Let's just change how the conversation around the stuff is happening and create these breadcrumbs or these links over to your stuff. So that's one use of links, okay? The second use of links that I like to talk about is really Evernote's native note linking feature. Okay, and um, I have, uh, we discuss it in the book in detail because it's a very important concept, but internal note links in Evernote will let you, with one click, go from one note to the other. So you can insert a hyperlink that'll take you from, say, a summary note of a list of things to do, and eat on that line item, I'm going to click, and it's going to give me a detail of uh, information related to that. So this is the tool you use to create structure in a fluid, unstructured system. 
like Evernote. So you have to learn this Evernote note linking skill. It's a skill that you need to be aware that the system allows you to do. And you can now create a lot of structure in your note by linking to and from notes. Now, once you do that, you can also use those links in other places, like say on a calendar. So say you have a note for a client and you have a showing appointment with them, add that link to your Evernote note in your calendar so that you can on your phone click to it and it'll take you right there. Okay, so I like that tip as well and I know we're running out of time. So the last oh. one that I'm going to talk yeah. about is public note links. So this is what I did with Michael and Dave today. I kind of gave them the top 10 things I'd like to talk about. I created a public link and sent it over to them. You can convert any note that's in your system to a URL that can be opened in a browser. Whoa. Okay? And did I just did, did I just did I blow Dave's mind? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> well, I kind of like that structured, an unstructured system create fluidity, create an unstructured system create and unstructure. It's like. Crazy. Okay. You know what? And, and here's Dave, and, and, and you know that we talked about this on the show. Here's how I do my paperless showings. My client has the MLS data on an iPad. They can annotate on it. I walk through with my Evernote my phone. I take a photo of the outside of the home. So now I take photos of the inside of the home. I write the address of the home. I take audio notes. Then I take their MLS notes. I put it in the Evernote account. Before they walk through the front door of their home, they have photos, notes, audio notes of every single home that I've showed them sent to them in, an, in, in, in a link format. Now, whether they ever revisit that information or not and listen to the audio notes that the backyard foundation needs some work or whatever it is, is one thing or another. But if you're trying to add value without adding time to your day and, and show that you're not going to miss a single thing for your client, especially with buyers that may go out with you and then the next week they're going out with someone else and they're basically they're doing a listing presentation they're trying to find the right realtor to work with they are going to work with you because no other realtor has looked at the details in that same manner and that's how we do our showings on Evernote audio photos written notes from them email to them in a link form so they don't have to have Evernote but they've got access to it it's super super powerful I have one more use case that um might trigger a few ideas for some of you, especially those of you that work in teams or work with a broker that does not use Evernote. Okay, so if your broker doesn't use Evernote, I mean, you all are interested in getting paid, right? And most of you don't get paid until all of your transaction documents are in to the broker, to the brokerage, right? So what you should do is create a list, a template list, and that is um, all the documents that you got to get into the broker. They probably already have one for you. Move it into Evernote. And then log all the dates that you give that, a copy of that document to the broker. And then you can share that through a public link with the broker or with your escrow team or you know all kinds of people and parties or collaborate internally with your team so that everybody's getting all of those things logged with your broker so you can get paid. I mean, it's a great use case for um, using Evernote in a real estate practice. And there's really no end to, especially on a team. The two here's the 45 things we got to do when we market a home. Here's the things you know. All that stuff is 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 so so important and and, and simple. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of people. The be, the beautiful thing I like chatting with people with Evernote about is that they will use it in a way I never thought of it before, and the next person will use it in a different way. And and um, you know if if you got value out of this, I know everyone got value out of, out of hearing Stacy. We also did the show with Andrew, and that sort of um, uh, was a bit of a starting point off. It was a great episode talking about how he's used it and, and a lot more about templates and, and that sort of stuff. But these were sort of the pro tips. Um, now, Dave, I'm going to ask you what I ask you at the end of every show, and I don't even know how you're going to quantify it, but where, where are you as far as, uh, as, far as takeaways here? Well, big time. Um, <laughs> no, really, big time. It's like it's made my... It, it kind of falls into me. I'm a systems guy. I gotta have systems, and this, and this is like big time systems. Um, and now I know that there's so much more that this thing can do. Um, I'm looking forward to reading that book, and it's not something that we real. I need to implement like today, but going forward as we grow our team, which we're trying to do, it's going to be something that I'm going to have to incorporate. Um, that, and I'm going to real quickly modify my pick in the National League. I, I have no idea why I said the Phillies because. No, you don't say Phillies. You say the Nationals. Phillies yelling at me over. What are you crazy? You say Phillies. You say the Nationals. Not the Phillies. I'm sorry. The, 
the Nationals. I, I'm going to pick the Mets. And my, and my very last thing is um, I'd like to publicly thank Kevin Tangen from my uh, macadamia nuts. He sent me some something from Hawaii. I did send him a bomb bomb, but these things are great, Kevin. Thank you very much. Kevin, hey, this is cool. Kevin's a good guy. So wait, so 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 wait. Let me. You are a diehard. Sorry, Stacey. We're gonna get to to, to the book <laughs> offer in just a second. This is, yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is no, I want the book. I want the book. You're you're a diehard Mets fan. You yeah. chose the Nationals. Your wife overheard you do that, and now you've changed your mind. Well, what am I crazy? <laughs> Come on, what's a, He's a smart man. He's a very smart man, and and and, 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 and a lovely person. But I wouldn't mess with her either. Um, just uh, one of the questions was: Do your clients have to be on Evernote in order to get the notes that you share with them through links? Absolutely not. Um, they go through and 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 they'll see them the same way. Sending a link to Dropbox or sending a link to something else, they don't have to be an Evernote user. Um, Stacy, that brings us to the end of the show uh, and talk about like highly recommend. We're talking about five dollars a month for for um, Evernote Premium, which you'd be crazy not to use. But even more crazy than that is not having a foundation how to use it properly. And so for an extra $14.99, you will learn. And like I'm telling you, you know you know Dave and I on the show, guys, 84 episodes. I have never recommended, nor Dave has ever recommended something that we don't think has enormous value for you. We've never asked you to spend your money. We've never taken an associate link or an affiliate link or a kickback of any kind. I owned this book from like a year ago or however long. When did it come out, Stacey? A year ago. Mm -hmm. A year ago. So like a year ago I got the book. I read it. It's impacted my business. $14.95 or $14.99. It's ridiculous. I paid more than that because it wasn't a special offer. But go ahead and let Stacey let people know how they can get untethered with Evernote and where they can go to, uh, to, get, uh, to get the book. So the book's available in a variety of forms uh, at getuntethered.com, getuntethered.com, and uh, it's $14.99 for the digital versions, and typically we also have a print version here, which you can see looks like this. Um, this usually is $19.99 plus shipping and handling. Right now we're running a special that you get for $14.99 that includes shipping you get the print version, or you can download uh, any uh, the Mobi PDF or Kindle version for fourteen ninety nine at the site. And you need the code Spring Sale, Spring Sale, oh, wow. all one word, um, to get the discount on the print version of the book. So I know some of you guys like to have you know the tangible stuff there that you can bookmark and take notes on. So we we did it in a, a print format, and you can see it's. And we go through 15 workflows that you can deploy as a self-employed person, which all real estate agents are. <laughs> so um, that's really hopefully give you some additional ideas. And, it and there's a lot of like sketch images too. Like like it's not just like in the upper right hand corner, click here. It like it shows you what to do. It sort of really really walks that through you. So Stacy, someone's gonna watch the show. Someone's gonna read your book. They're going to go through all these amazing links that you share to us. Then they. They go, I've got a few questions. I want to organize it a little bit better. You offer one on one coaching too, as well, for Evernote users to sort of really implement a very tailored way. So, talk about opportunities to hire you for uh, for a few hours. Yeah, I work one on one with people through Skype all over the United States. And you, I have a new client offer for $99. You get 50 minutes directly with me, screen sharing, looking at your account and getting your notebooks and stacks organized and getting your questions and training solved. So, a uh, really good offer to get personalized uh, personalized attention at a at a fast pace that can transform your your knowledge and skyrocket your productivity with Evernote. Um, you can you can self schedule it. You just go to my website, the top of the top of any page, and um, it syncs live with my calendar, and will get you going and get you like set up and moving forward uh, really fast. And that's HarmanEnterprises.com, right? It, that's correct. Okay, Stacey, I, I can't thank you enough. I, I've, I, I've learned so much. Dave's head spinning. The Twitter feed is people saying tons of value, which I know it will be. There will be a lot of people that go, thank you so much for, for, for connecting and for scanning my business card in Vegas. I appreciate that. Um, where can people get a hold of you? We've already talked about one quick last time. Email address, Twitter account, where to get the book, where to find uh, your website. So Harmon Enterprises is going to have direct contact to me in a variety of forms, including all the social links, Twitter, uh, 
at Stacy Harmon, I spell my name with an E, is an outstanding way to reach me. Uh, it's Stacy at HarmonEnterprises.com. I mean, I, it's pretty consistent across all the channels. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, all of them. Um, but Twitter, I can get back to you quick and would love to have you connect with me at my website. You can send a form if you have a more free-flowing question as well. I really appreciate this. I love talking about Evernote with people that are interested in it. So um, it's been a delight. And clearly, you have no enthusiasm for it. No, I have no <laughs> I, I mean. I, it's transformed our business. I mean, I me too. Uh, by the way, before, if it's a piece of paper contract, it's in our a contract management system. If it's anything else, it's an Evernote. I don't have sleepless nights. I can go on vacation for a month and have my whole office with me. It's about freedom. It's about spending more time with my kids, more time with my clients, more time with my friends. There, there's so much value. Yeah, and I wanted to tell you, I have, I host, um, I have a whole roster of like ten hours of free Evernote training on my website. Um, that is in, uh, again, you have the link for that. But for yeah. people that this is just wet their appetite and need more of the basics or other use cases, an outstanding <laughs> opportunity to just bring yourself up to speed at your convenience. Yeah, and and, and the link is below. But if you happen to be listening to this on the podcast <laughs> or whatnot. It's HarmonEnterprises.com slash Evernote-training-videos. That's where you'll get that link. Um, Dave, I, I didn't let you know this, but next week we are off the air. We are back on April 24th. I don't know what it's like for you. The market is insane, and I need next week to get a whole lot of stuff done. What's the market like back there in uh, Bridgewater, New Jersey? Same way. It's, you know, a lot of buyers, not a lot of real good inventory, multiple offers. It's, it's just it's a lot of chaos. But we're making money. We're busy. We're putting deals in the draw. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so I apologize, guys, but uh, it is the spring market, and, and we are active realtors. That's the advantage of what we do here on the show. Um, we are doing this day in and day out. Uh, so we'll be back on April the 24th. If you have any referrals heading out to the East Coast of the United States, get a hold of Dave. He'll put you in the hands of the right REMAX agent, and he knows where they are because he's got them geolocated on his Evernote account map. If you've got any referrals coming out to the West Coast of Canada, get a hold of me. I'll put you in the hands of the right REMAX agent. And as Melanie Galley of REMAX, Corporate Maria wants us to end every show, please tell five other REMAX agents about Mobile Agent TV. It offers us the opportunity to reach out to people like Stacey Harmon that will give us an unbelievable, valuable hour of her time, which is greatly appreciated by Dave and myself and our whole audience. Thank you very much. Dave, amazing. I'm glad that you changed your pick. you got to go with the Mets. I don't know what you were thinking. Uh, Stacy, thank you so much uh, for, for giving us an hour of time. We appreciate it. Uh, you've, been, you've been wonderful and, uh, and, and very, very much appreciated. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you all in two weeks. Bye-bye.